Okay, here we go. 5.7, last section in um, chapter 5 before we move on to um, looking at linear functions in more depth. Right now we're just looking at interpreting some linear functions, okay? And before we do that, just want to quickly summarize, maybe look at a couple things here. So first of all, we understand what a relation is, hopefully, right? Relationship between two numbers. So a linear relation is a relation between two numbers that produce a straight line. Okay, and that's what we've been looking at, how uh, as one value goes up, so as your x, y value goes up, your x value goes by the same, uh, different, like a steady amount, so your y goes up by the same amount, x, boom, steady amount, you end up with a line, right? So that's the idea behind a linear relation. Now, a linear function is simply all your linear relations, except we know that your function cannot be vertical because that vertical line test, right? If I have a vertical line, well, then it's not a function because... It's just not. They can't be on top of each other, right? That's an x value that has multiple y's. So it's not a function if it's vertical. And that's essentially all this is saying here, okay? So what we're going to look at now are a couple different things. Uh, from a linear function, you can find, first of all, the rate of change, right? And you can identify whether it's uh, discrete or continuous. Uh, here's an example that we can look at. So a height of a full plane, right? So first of all, um, can you tell me if this is discrete or continuous? And since the height of the float plane is going steadily down, you, you reach all heights at all times. So this data would indeed be continuous, even though you've plotted up a bunch of points. The fact is that numbers exist between those points, right? And you can find your rate of change here as well by picking any two points and then drawing an x, y axis, boom. Or S. So this would be down 400. So it would be minus 400 over four minutes. Um, so if you look at it, it would be minus 100 meters a minute would be your rate of change on this thing, okay? Now, hopefully we've looked at that and hopefully you've got a pretty good idea of how that works, okay? Now, there's a couple other things that we can do with um, linear functions and that's identifying both the x and the y intercept, okay? These are very, very useful points on a linear function. They involve where the graph starts and kind of ends. Because look, in all these real life functions that we have, remember that we're basically dealing in this quadrant right here, right? Because that's your positive x and your positive y. And when we talk about things like uh, time and height, for example, then we are dealing with positive values, okay? So we're in this first quadrant kind of thing, if you can imagine that. Now, the x-intercept in this case, okay, the x-intercept and the y-intercept are where they cross those respective axes. I'm going to start with the y-intercept first because that's often kind of the more important one. Well, they're both important, but that's the more useful one often. It tells you basically when you started, right? So the y-intercept here is 1,000. So the y-intercept for us right now would be, well, the x is 0, and it's 1,000, right? So this is your y-intercept. If you want to look at your x-intercept, that's down here, right? Your x-intercept would be y is 0, so it's going to be 10 and 0. So your y-intercept, your x-intercept. Your y-intercept has an x value of 0, and your x-intercept has a y value of 0. Very, very important to get that, okay? Because from that... Um, from those intercepts, we can start getting a bunch of different things, right? We can use the intercepts to find a couple different things. We can use it to graph the line. So for example, if I gave you these two points, you just plot them up here and connect the dots between them, right? And you can also find the rate of change. Well, it went down a thousand, right, in 10 minutes. So that works out to be negative 100 meters a minute as well, okay? So this is how we're interpreting um, some linear functions. We're looking at the intercepts. We're looking at the rate of change. Okay. We're looking at um, where they start, where they end, and blah, 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 blah. Let me just quickly uh, give you another question. Say I ask you to graph the line. Let's say the function here uh, f of x is equal to 
um, let me just have a look here. Let's go minus 2x plus 7. Okay? So what I'd like you to think about is how are you going to graph this on a, on a thing, right? So first of all, let's remember that f of x is simply y, right? But what would happen if you looked at the intercepts specifically? So if you want to find the y intercept, right? Remember that x is equal to 0. So you're going to go y is equal to minus 2 times x, which is 0, plus 7. That means that y is equal to 7. That means that what you do is you go up to 7 and you plot it. That's your y-intercept. Okay? If you want to find your x-intercept, right? That's where y is equal to 0. So what you now have is instead of f of x here or y, you put 0. And then you try and find the rest, the value of x. And this involves some algebra, folks. So what we need to do... Let's bring this over, make it positive, so you get 2x is equal to 7, and then we divide by 2, you get x is equal to 7 halves, hopefully you can see that that's 3.5. So that means that the x-intercept is 3.5, boom, there you go, you can find your line, right? So you can also find your rate of change, your delta y over delta x, it went down 7 in 3.5 which means it's negative 2 is your rate of change, right? So there's a lot of different things here that we can look at, ladies and gentlemen. And um, let's just quickly have a look at another graph. Maybe we can make uh, some connections here. So let's look at this information. So what would be my y-intercept? So my y-intercept here right? Right there, boom. It cost me 500 bucks. Now, what the hell does that mean? Right? How could you interpret the fact that your y-intercept is 500 bucks? Well, what that means is that your startup cost, before you even made any textbooks at all, published any, it cost you 500 bucks, right? That is the cost of designing it, I guess, and just um, the cost of designing it, basically, right? Now, what you have to do is start charging for them. So, um, for, so this is the cost of publishing a yearbook, okay? It's not actually the um, revenue that you're going to make. It's how much it costs to make them. So, if, before you make any it costs, 500 bucks. Now, how much is it going to cost per, uh, let's look at the rate of change, right? Let's look at the rate of change. Here, looks like we're going up. A thousand, right? We're going up a thousand for every fifty. So it's a thousand dollars for every fifty yearbooks. And if you do the math here, you're going to see that that's going to be twenty. So the cost per yearbook is twenty bucks, right? So that means that you're even twenty dollars per yearbook, I guess, if you want, right? So now we have the rate of change. We've looked at the y-intercept. Uh, are these values discrete or are they uh, continuous? Can't, don't know if I already mentioned that, but these are. Yes, you can have numbers in between, for sure. But can you draw a solid line in here? That would assume that you can have half a yearbook, quarter of a yearbook, a tenth of a yearbook. So in this case, you got to think logically. Yes, you can fill in some numbers, but you can't draw a solid line because you can't have half a yearbook. Okay, so this would indeed be discrete data, right? Um, and we found the rate of change. So this is, uh, and in this case, you don't have an x-intercept. So it's not something that we can actually look at. This is also a positive slope. Anyways, so I, I hope that gave you an idea of how to interpret some of these graphs, clear up a few issues. If you have any others, please don't hesitate to ask me in class.